Yes, everyone, good evening, good evening, good evening. ATJ Vibe Live is here, yes, we are here. So, so, what an interesting week, even within the last, call it about what, eight, nine days, well, we have seen some interesting stuff, we have seen some, uh, pardon me guys, good evening, good evening, good evening, everyone, yes. So, the internet has finally work in its favor thank goodness and welcome once again so as you know you'd have noticed within the last eight seven eight days or so a lot of things has happened you know so you know tonight on ATG vibe live it's pretty straightforward as you can see the topics yes from the volcanic eruption in st. Vincent also referred to as Vinci Kano. Yes, yeah man, lots of foray. Volcanic eruption is one. Plus, also, 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 COVID-19 vaccine. Jamaica Olympic, as you know, Olympic preparations are ongoing. In terms of qualifiers, still some growing concerns among other things Miss Universe 2020 to be staged <clears throat> in Florida coming up very very shortly tourism and what is it Caribbean countries need to do to get it right as well as new COVID-19 measures that are now being put in place by the Honorable Prime Minister you know what I'm referring to right yeah, man. Plus, the case of COVID-19 vaccine hoarding that is still going on worldwide and Jamaica's reaction to it in the Jamaican parliament. Plus, tackling gender-based violence, what you can do, whether you are male or female, in helping to put a dent in gender-based violence, which is now becoming more and more of a pandemic than anything else. Not just in Jamaica alone, the Caribbean, the rest of the world. And remembering His Royal Highness, the late Prince Philip. Yes, he died last weekend at the age of 99. The Queen's concert, that is. And many of us would remember his visits to Jamaica. Sometimes he comes alone, sometimes he comes jointly with Her Majesty the Queen, who is the UK monarch, all right? Let me just kind of bring some music into the mix there now before I really jump into the vent. And also, special shout out to DJ Khaled for what he has done so far. I'm going to speak more on that very shortly. But listen this. It's a famous reggae song back in the days. Just listen. That is Hong Kong flu by the Ethiopians. It was written out here in Jamaica as far back as 1969 and it was released by JJ Records, which is a subsidiary of Dr. Bird, produced by Harry Johnson 
and it is a famous song especially with COVID-19 pandemic that is still lingering across the world back then you had the Hong Kong flu among other contagious respiratory infections worldwide but anyway there's a bigger story which is of significant importance to the Caribbean region and that is of the Lassophore volcano in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Now, that volcano has erupted last week, Friday, and today it's in its fourth day since the eruption. And uh, trust me, it is getting out of hand. And uh, volcanoes are considered dangerous in every shape and form. Why? Because the heat, the pressure, among other things, can cause a lot of trouble. If you have noticed in some parts of the Eastern Caribbean, ash has been spreading across, even as far as Barbados to the south, east, yes, which is out into the Atlantic Ocean, right? And that's the closest of Caribbean islands to South America, per se. But trust me, the situation has gone from bad to worse in terms of movement of livestock, movement of human beings in particular. And seriously, it is getting rough. Even with the falling ash that has caused a lot of visibility problems for fisher folks yes so imagine now the catch or that sea will have to wait on another day or even longer for that matter but also when you hear heard the prime minister of saint vincent and the grenadines dr Ralph gonzalves talking it puts you in a state of you know anguish but i soon be join up on that one for you but just listen to this audio clipping coming from breakfast television which is a u.s television show and the hosts were interviewing uh vincent on the issue of the volcano eruption now listen to this very carefully okay Hold on a minute. All right. Gav Henry over there in Toronto, Canada. Good evening to you. I'll be speaking shortly on gender-based violence in Jamaica. And why is it we're not getting tough as a nation? But let's deal with this environmental issue. Yes, Welcome that is City TV of Canada. Dana Pugliese, Sixero here with you. Uh, last Friday is the first time we saw some pictures from St. Vincent and the Grenadines regarding a volcanic eruption. Um, videos went viral. It has not stopped moving since. There have been explosions almost daily. No one just a few hours ago. This video you're seeing right here is fresh video. Water is becoming scarce. Power is becoming even more scarce. It is a bad situation down in St. Vincent and the, and the Grenadines. And we are, uh, pleased is not the word, but I think it's important that we have someone down there to tell us what they are seeing. So Cuthbert Tucker has been kind enough to join us. His power is okay. And he, he's joining us live right now on Breakfast Television. Cuthbert, thank you for joining us today. Appreciate it. And good morning, morning. I'm welcome. Thanks for having me on your show. Cuthbert, tell us what it's like living there right now. I know you're in the south part of the island, so you're not evacuated yet. So what have you been told to do at this point? It's been 40 years since we've seen this volcano erupt, right? That is correct. It's today, today is actually 42nd anniversary since it last erupt. Um... This morning around 6.40, it had another big eruption, which I find from since it erupted on Friday the 9th, which is the largest of them all. From the south end, you can literally see and the volcano is over 20 miles away from us, and we see it perfectly clear. Um, in terms of devastation, most of the northern end of the island seems to be devastated into villages like Sandy Bay, they are basically covered with ash. The roads are impassable. People 
some residents decide to stay up there. Um, the, the conditions are very horrible. The streets, you, they're basically full of ash everywhere you go. Look white, literally white. Um, the water supply right above now is very low. Um, the water authority is trying to ration water, and in some cases where people cannot get pipe-borne water, you literally have to take trucks and deliver water to the residents. And Cuthbert, this is during a pandemic, so not only are you all dealing with COVID-19, uh, dengue, dengue fever, and now this. I that imagine anybody who lives near a volcano, you're constantly literally looking over your shoulder, thinking one day, Definitely. one day, and now it's here. So what is your plan yes. and what are you hoping for? Are you in desperate need for basic supplies right now? What's the plan in terms of evacuation? What, what does it look like outside your window right now? I know you should be staying inside where it's safe, but what does it look like for you right now? Um, this morning when I woke up, it was very bright and sunny. But after the explosion, it became a bit dark. Like, you know, like, like after five in the afternoon, how it looked gloomy, like the sun is about to set. That's how it's looking at this point in time. So, so your situation specifically, Cuthbert, you you're you're going to ride this out for a bit. How concerned are you? Um, to be honest, I'm not that much concerned. The, the the problem is the ash that is really affecting us in terms of breathing, and also limiting the water coming to residents in the in the safe zone. We really, in short supply of water, we really need water, basically. Um, the shelters, the government have been, um, they have been speaking with different agencies and also different governments around the world in terms of providing some um, supplies for the shelters and so on, the residents. But what is our biggest concern at this point in time? Mm -hmm. You're all in our thoughts and our prayers. We're all watching this very closely. You can't even imagine what this must feel like. Uh, I'm sure you're glued to the news feeds. Is that how you're keeping, uh, how are you knowing what's going on? Is it radio feeds? Is it television? How, how are you all checking well, up on one another? Well, we've been doing the social media, mainly at um, the Facebook and WhatsApp. Okay. And I know yes. for viewers, um, look at the Canadian Red Cross or any agencies that could be delivering aid uh, when, when yes. needed most right now, right? For anybody watching? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, so for me guys, once again, so after that uh, like interruption. So the situation is grappling there now, as according to one eyewitness speaking with Breakfast Television on City TV, which is one of Canada's um largest television broadcasters. And uh, trust me, it's great. Water supply shortage is real. Uh Road accessibility is limited, you know. So you could imagine the agricultural supplies, the ground produce, the livestock, among other things. And uh, they are calling for more help. I hope the Jamaican authorities are going to be very careful with the whole situation in terms of assisting with water supply, among other things. But anyway. Because we have understand that the Minister of Foreign Affairs out here, Kamina Johnson-Smith, have been in touch with the St. Vincentian authorities. So too is former pageant queen and the Minister of, sorry, Shadow Minister of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade, Lisa Hanna. Alright, so they have been quite very much in touch with the people of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. There are a few Jamaicans who live on that small Caribbean island. Now let us turn your attention to the response of Dr. Ralph Gonzalez to the media during a press conference. Take a listen. Um, the chief medical officer would be identifying the persons who are already vaccinated so that we can get them on the, on the, the ship. You see there's a ship in the harbor. Two of them there now. And um, we, the ships don't have enough personnel at the moment to keep people on the ships, but they have enough personnel to transport persons 
to these destinations. But Simone Kiza Beach tells me that what she wants to do is to, the chief medical officer, is that those who are vaccinated, she can get them going there on the vessel, those on the ships, those who to go to particular destinations. If they choose to, this is a voluntary business. And the they would those who are, uh, are not yet vaccinated but who would be vaccinated, you would not want to send them immediately after vaccination. You would want to hold them keep them for a day or two because if you, some persons upon vaccination, you know, they develop a, an itch, a, a little wooziness in the head. Yeah, side you effects that is, guys. Some people, so you would like to keep them there so there's two days and so on. So there are some matters which have to be done, dealt with. Um, and then the, the ships are doing, I've, I've, uh, uh, there are certain things we have to do with them. But the, I've spoken to one of the cruise line's leadership this morning, and, you know, I must tell you, the way in which all right, Pastor Abid, this is the part where Dr. Ralph Gonzalez started to sob because he finally come to see the very great danger that was setting in. And this comes more than 40 years after the last volcanic eruption in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. people and in Grenada and in Dominica, St. Lucia and Antigua. I've responded to put people in their homes, strangers, bring tears to my eyes. There you go. So that's one interesting case. So a, a lot of things are happening there now. More volcanic eruptions will be continuing. But it's highly likely that this eruption can last up to possibly nine months. It can go up to a year and depends on the nature of the volcanic activity. Now, this is the first time in a very long time this volcano has erupted. You would have known about the one in Montserrat. That is the Sophore Hills volcano. That's different from La Sophore in St. Vincent and the Grenadines and ATJ Vibe Live would like to wish for good health, safety of fellow St. Vincentians right now as they move to safer shelter until the situation comes to a complete stop over there. Yes, it is very serious, it's very grim, and uh, trust me, the Jamaican people right now are very concerned, you know, because I have a few friends who have friends from St. Vincent and the Grenadines through my current institution, which is the Universal West Indies. So, with that, so we will turn over now to the, well, speaking of tourism and civil aviation, no civil and air travel. It's taking place as it relates to the island of St. Vincent and Grenadines and neighboring countries of Barbados and possibly Trinidad and Tobago because of poor visibility in the air where the volcanic activity is affected those um, islands. So we will have to monitor these very closely to see what is the situation like. But trust me, when you have active volcanoes like these, the rising of the ash, it's Thickens the space and it creates a lot of disturbances because of the highly charged particles that comes out of those volcanoes. The magma, you know, the 
acids that are inside of them and the poisonous gases and if you dare to inhale those stuff especially from the falling ash if you are asthmatic or you have some form of respiratory infection you are likely to die from those so trust me it is a very serious time especially COVID-19 now let's get straight to the other topic COVID-19 vaccine so finally I along with many other citizens of Jamaica who are part of the essential services for slash tourism industry have finally got vaccinated the first of two vaccines which were presented to me by AstraZeneca through the Ministry of Health Jamaica and this vaccine is one of two set of vaccines yes the next one is due to be done in July that would be 8 to 12 weeks time frame all right now vaccination is important it's about life-saving issues and you have to do everything that is necessary right and for Jamaica to rebound and get back into the tourism sector vaccination has to be the key factor right the first set of blitz took place three Saturdays ago and this is why the COVID-19 measures had to be put in place then under the honorable the most honorable prime minister Andrew Olness which means that up until yesterday well it was far back as well Sunday that curfew begins at midday on Saturday and it goes through till the following Monday at 5 a.m. so that would help to facilitate persons who have to undergo vaccination now the benefits of vaccination is very important especially at this time now let me just run through some interesting benefits here all right now this is coming from the world health organization publication you can visit the website www.who.int all right so disease control benefits yes that is one key factor when you help to eliminate diseases it would do very well for our country and it will also make countries a lot more healthier and keep society more active and organized and at the same time in turn we'll see economic benefits um herd protection as well all right that is one of the key factors um cancer prevention and also helping to stave off um collapse of the health system especially with hospitals and uh, also travel safe travel and mobility now many countries if let's say for instance tim wants to travel to the United States tomorrow, leaving from Kingston and Antigua Bay. He has to make sure that he does his vaccination, give himself some time to, you know, let the um, side effects wear off, because there are a few side effects that are associated with COVID-19 vaccination. And uh, if, let's say if it's the one shot, um, version like the Johnson Johnson or the Moderna or the two shot which is the AstraZeneca you know that once he has done this vaccination then he can take that vaccination card along with his passport that would contain say the US visa or whichever visa it is or if it's a country he's going to which is that, that doesn't require you to have a visa then you would just very well show the 
um, checking for such boarding agent at the airport prior to departure to say that yes you have complied with the vaccination policy of whichever country you are uh, he is going to now it is very very important right and uh, you know vaccination really can help stave off any further development of um any future diseases of such and we must take this opportunity to you know try to implore more knowledge and understanding of you know what vaccines can do and uh, you know my fellow friends who follow me on social media who work in the tourism sector i encourage you to get vaccinated right it's for your own good because trust me it works for me it can work for you all right um the astrazeneca so far we understand that there are a few cases of blood clots um in the uk we haven't heard so much of that out here um but i understand that the johnson and johnson version that is currently in distribution phase there now there are no possibilities of recalls because of rare cases of blood clots associated with the vaccine but please stay tuned via facebook and please know this video will be uploaded on my youtube channel so you can watch it and you can share it because trust me we have to be in the know about this vaccination process all right so remember when the next vaccination blitz is announced make sure you are doing what is necessary to register in whichever country you are whether it's in jamaica the united states canada or the uk or even say germany or eastern caribbean wherever you are make sure you register do your vaccination yeah do the right thing trust me it's good it's good to know that vaccination is important all right now if you notice the current case count we have passed 45,000 approaching 50,000 there now right in terms of COVID-19 cases over 650 persons have died from COVID-19 majority of which are related to cardiovascular diseases and uh, it will require a lot of serious thinking in terms of that among other things to help stave off COVID-19 but you can get some more details by doing your research because the Minister of Health Dr. Tufton have been listening to the experts as well as the Chief Medical Officer Dr. Jacqueline Bissesa McKenzie in which Trust me, the Jamaican public have come to learn more and more about this virus and the profound effects that it has on society. All right? Now, next thing I want to touch on very, very, if you notice, very closely, and that is, guess what? Guess what? Tackling gender-based violence but before i go straight into that special shout out to two important persons spraga benz he's working on a movie project there now yes it's called second chances it's a jamaican movie and being a part of the production crew is a good move you are in shutters which feature the likes of Kim Mali and Paul Campbell, who most Jamaicans would have known about him from, from many, many years. I've seen Paul Campbell in interesting films like um, the, you know, the story about the Mark Bay Rebellion that featured the, uh, the Honorable Reverend Ronnie Twaits, who played the role of George William Gordon. But, um, Paul Campbell played the role of 
Paul Bogle, yes, and um, lunatic, not to mention the famous uh, third world cup movie, yeah, man. But big up yourself, Spaga Benz, once again for providing some good vibes and good energy into the film and theater industry, all right. Well, not in as in on stage theater, no, we're talking cinematic theater. You know, you can go to the movies and watch it. Well, we all have Netflix, so that's not the case. We don't have to go to cinema, all right? Now, the next thing we should focus on is gender-based violence. No, it is becoming more and more perilous at this time. We have seen it loud and clear for the last three weeks. Women have been killed. Women have been abused at some stage. And it is becoming more of an eyesore. Former First Lady of the United States, Hillary Rodham Clinton, said it very loud and clear at a UN Women's Conference in Beijing, China, roughly 30 years ago. Women's rights are human rights. We have seen videos of a man using a machete to chop a woman in her face and that's in St. Catherine. We have seen where a teacher went missing found dead, cut up in pieces. And the young men who were trying to sell the vehicle for roughly $200,000, it was too much for anyone to bear. Then, who remembers the great incident that affected the Jamaican populace? Yes, we're talking about that young, bright lady, Canise Jackson, went missing, found dead. Yeah? Severely beaten. And trust me, to learn about this incident, where two males beating up a woman, after the woman stepped out of her seven-seater vehicle, the man inflicting punch, tongue, a lot of stuff. It is so aggravating and so distraughtful. If I were to watch that video again, trust me, it, is, it, would, be, it would be too much for me to bear. My sister, we have already spoke. Close friends have already spoke about it. So many people. And um, I've heard this evening in Jamaican Parliament, the former Minister of Foreign Affairs and Trade, the honor, well, he doesn't have the politically appointed title of the honorable, but we all know him, Mr. Anthony Hilton, came out this evening to push for a motion to remove the MP who is alleged to have committed an assault on the woman along with the other yeah, along with the other man and uh, trust me it, it it even shocked me to hear the whole commotion in parliament that followed after that but commendations to Mr. Anthony Hilton, no political bias, please, please note. This is about principle, right? Stand up for the rights of women. Because as I said before, Hillary Rodham Clinton said it, women's rights are human rights. If you don't believe me, you can Google Universal Declaration of Human Rights and look up what it means. And also, Women's rights that were put in place 
by the United Nations. All right? We are signatory to the UN on a lot of these fundamental rights as it relates to human rights and women's rights. Now, both sides of the political fence need to sit down and listen to the public some more because for too long we have been seeing these form of gender-based violence that have been rocking the nation continuously and it is so disrespectful and absurd i took part in a student demonstration years ago and i had to condemn the behavior that student can no longer walk through the gates of that tertiary institution much less look at that job i understand that he is in prison already been charged and convicted for assault occasionally bodily harm I understand and uh, i even said it some time ago that the discount in terms of the guilty plea should not be 50 percent it should be between 15 and 25 percent because really and truly the incident that occurred within the last 24 hours that woman could have died that woman could have died and it is so serious and um let me take this opportunity to extend to the women's center in jamaica as well as women inc woman inc that is um we change jamaica jamaica for justice and other civic groups to help the lady and provide some form of security not to mention miss jennifer edwards who is the president of the women's wing of the people's national party you can extend and hand to lend support to the abused lady as well as donna scott Mudley, an independent human rights personnel whether you are an activist advocate do something let us get the lady out of the situation because trust me this is becoming more and more of an eyesore all right as i said before it's not a political thing we have to treat this under universal principle when you see an incident like this right don't be afraid to report it to the police try to have the video evidence and do it in a manner that it doesn't look like yo you're trying to blow up the thing right if you have security cameras within your house and if there's one of the cameras that can be able to see what's going on in the public view like on the streets ensure it's properly connected and everything and try to store the evidence and when you're reporting the matter to the police you're presented to them and remember also, please have the contact, the direct contact number to the police station in whichever community you're living, right? Not just the 911 number, the fixed line number, if you have contact to the inspector of police or the superintendent of police, do so. And you have Crime Stop, which is 311 in Jamaica, all right? If you dial in Crime Stop in Jamaica, you do not have to give your name. You just tell them what you know, tell them the location where the incident occurred, and then boom, the rest is history. They will address it from there on in. We have to address this issue of gender based violence that is kicking up rumpus in Jamaica. Alright, and it's a very serious matter. Next thing, speaking about violence in Jamaica, we have heard from Patrick Roberts well-known records producer and politician yes he has added his voice to what the prime minister is speaking to as it relates to the recording industry in jamaica which is being severely plagued by violent lyrics and it is a big problem 
more and more it is a big problem countries like the US Canada UK that taking a hard look at our music industry because sooner than later we would not be surprised if Vivo which is a product of YouTube will be starting to monitoring certain songs which are considered violent disrespectful and if these videos contain any firearms because we have heard from Dennis Brooks communications consultant at the Jamaica Constabulary Force we all know him from Nationwide 93 FM in the midday time with our very famous legendary Cliff Hughes you know kind of bring us up to date with the what is trending now that these guns that are featured in music videos in Jamaica are considered dangerous and this is my this is how I sum it up right um don't get me wrong um Dennis if anything you just message me on on, on whatsapp I'll give you my number through the Facebook Messenger and we will talk more. But trust me, it is a serious time. And for too long, the crime, it is, it is getting out of hand. And we need to do no more to clean up the music. I understand? Bob Marley have put us in good shape with the music prior to his untimely death through cancer. And it so happened that the gangster behavior just really seeped into the music business and it's not a good look people from abroad have been calling me messaging me and telling me please please oh please can you sit down with some of those record producers locally and say yo please tell the artist to stop the foolishness right and there's a culture of payola that exists up to this very day that is really really causing more ill than good for the music business and that has to be keenly addressed all right so to sean paul you know you go big up yourself dj khaled trust me you have been doing some good work music videos you're bringing some of the artists like bounty killer barrington levy cape Leton, coffee you know among others in your latest video that you're working on you're in jamaica and i hope you enjoy the good vibes and you know continue to take care of your youth yeah man your one son where you have where you do your album for dedicated to him trust me i like how dj khaled really keep hip-hop and dance moving together those two work side by side and that is why he in particular has helped to make sure that beats by dr dre headsets continues to be a strong brand you know that apple owns beats but you know khalid is a force to be reckoned with in the music industry all right so that's that now the last and not least thing for the night you know we have already seen the um, transition of the life of the Duke of Edinburgh, Prince Philip. Yes, he died at the age of 99 last week, Friday. And uh, he has had a series of illnesses. He had to be rushed to the hospital within the last two years, like numerous times. And right now, Her Majesty the Queen, Elizabeth II, she is beside herself most time when she gets to bed. But in terms of support on a day-to-day -day basis now, she can't just do the work on her own because she's getting older and older. She's 94 years old. So she'll have to call on her son. Yes, the eldest son, Prince Charles. Who is the Prince of Wales alongside his son, who is the Queen's grandson, Prince William, yes, and possibly Harry, because 
trust me, a lot is now being brought to the attention no? as it relates to Great Britain and its monarchy because a lot of things are happening. Some people are of the view that Her Majesty should start the process of abdication to make way for Prince Charles, you know, and to start the process of succession planning for the least, the, 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 well, I wouldn't say the least, but for the most part, for Prince William, yes? And Prince William is a very active, modern monarch member monarchy member because his personality is a reflection of today's people especially people born in the 1980s also known as the millennials so there are a lot of great things that can come out of prince william alongside harry so it's going to be rough it's going to be tough and you know there's a when the husband dies, the wife is going to have a rough time, especially experiencing signs of loneliness, among other things. I know people who have been through situations like this, and you know, there will be a time when the children will have to assist um, the queen in ensuring that things are done. Because remember, you know, the queen has a ceremonial role. In the life of the UK, the executive role sits with the Prime Minister at 10 Downing Street. But what has to be done has to be done. And I hope that Charles, the Prince of Wales, will be able to sit with his son, his two sons, and get things together and, you know, support their you know queen that's in charge because trust me it's not an easy ride all right um as you know a little fact fun fact his royal highness visited jamaica on several occasions he visited our shores in 2002 that time i was a member of the jamaica combined cadet force in the rank of lance corporal so when i served as lance corporal at corner college cadet unit I was in my fourth and penultimate year of high school and uh, when we got the news that time me and other cadets get the news that we were to serve as guard of honor in the royal visit of jamaica in 2002 at sam Sharp square trust me we have to get our thing together clothes press shoes properly polished and everything and the day we reached down to the parade square in downtown Mantico Bay it was amazing people gathered they wanted to see the Queen at the time it was the golden jubilee of Her Majesty the Queen yes her 50th anniversary of her reign as the British monarch and also the ceremonial head of state of Jamaica even though we're in the process of becoming a republic, it's going to take some time. But that time, I would very much see the Queen alongside um, the Duke of Edinburgh, who is also referred to as the Queen's Consort. Um, also, he was there in 1966 as the patron of the Commonwealth Games. Yes, he is a sports person. Football, cricket, athletics, rugby, um, horseback riding, polo, equestrian. And he had some very interesting stints with international governing bodies, even with the Olympic movement. And this is why I'm a big fan of sports myself. Very happy to have the privilege of having a better understanding of the Commonwealth Games movement and the functionaries of the British monarch as it relates to the Commonwealth Games. All right? Now, let me take this opportunity and highlight in my comment section the messages from the children of, her, 
of Her Majesty the Queen speaking as it relates to Harry. Ah, uh, Harry, sorry. Um, Prince Philip. Yeah. Now, sports, sports, sports. So we're coming towards the end of the show, you know. So, Olympic qualifiers is on. But, the, the SOS is starting to show up. And it is in relation to athletes preparing for the Olympic Games. So, Glenn Mills have come out strong in speaking out on the fact that we may not be able to accumulate as much medals as the last three editions of the Olympics, starting from Beijing 2008. And this is because of the COVID-19 pandemic and the whole preparational structure that is facing grim circumstances of its own and uh, i stand by glenn mills words because trust me it is not an easy ride dr mills really had a lot of work cut out for his fellow athletes and you know he has been conditioning the likes of usain bolt um Johan blake to some extent to becoming champions of the world whether it's the Olympic Games, the World Championships, or the Commonwealth Games, and now to face the possibility of not being able to muster as much medals as possible at the Games of Tokyo this summer is of added concern. Not only just him is in the line speaking on that term, the President of the Intersecondary School Sports Association, who organizes the marquee event, Boys and Girls Champs, or Champs as we would refer to, Keith Wellington has spoken out on the grown issue, and it is becoming more and more worse with the fact that there are new COVID-19 measures being put in place. Uh, there's some glimmer of hope from the Prime Minister's side in terms of organization of champs no discussions is still ongoing with the minister of sports on that matter and i'm looking forward to hear some positive outcome within the next week or two as it relates to the future of champs 2021 why i say this is not only just say winning the champs on behalf of school but also qualification to, for the World Youth Championships, the Olympic Games, preparations for the World Championships the following year, alongside the Commonwealth Games, the CAC and the NACAC Youth Championships, the Caribbean Games, should it that the, those games be rescheduled, among other things. I understand that the characters had to be shifted up on several occasions between last year and to this year because of the pandemic. Right? Also, who is speaking some seriousness in terms of what is happening with our preparations for the Olympics? His name is Mr. Garth Gale. Now, Garth Gale is no stranger to track and field. He has been in sports for years he has been working alongside the then president dr warren blake that is jamaica athletics and he has still voiced his concerns when we're going to have more meets going when we're going to have our athletes preparing for the games of tokyo and other events to follow it's rough it's tough and to get athletes from other countries to come here to get themselves together and to gel especially relay teams can be sometimes too much because of the whole restriction patterns among other things but it's only time will tell on the part of the government especially the minister of sport and the minister of health in addressing the issue of covid19 and sports in jamaica speaking in sports also football is another thing we have been hearing growing cries from Mon um, Humble Lion for the discontinuation of the Premiership. Yes, and Humble Lion has been calling out to the professional 
Football League of Jamaica to um, to scrap the season of the Premiership to focus more on ensuring that players, officials, and backroom staff of clubs in the Premier League get vaccinated because vaccination is the way forward to get football back and running. But also, here is the sad reality that is facing us. If we're going to have the league, it has to be in a bubble. And if there's no bubble, then there's no league. Another thing of significant importance is the preparation for the men's national football team for the FIFA World Cup qualifiers. So a lot of things will have to work together. One hand cannot wash on its own. One hand cannot clap. It takes two hands to clap and two hands to wash each other. So there has to be a whole different shift, right? And the University of the West Indies alongside the University of Technology and GC Foster College need to come together along with the JFF, along with other national sporting organizations, the National Olympic Committee in particular, and most of all the Minister of Health, the Minister of Sport, to try and organize some biosecure type of competitions, with the major competitions in Jamaica, which is football and athletics. If you get these things right, we can address the issue. All right? But the community spread is there, so what we can do. I need to know, all right? But with that said, ATJ Vibe Live is coming to an end. But I have to say thank you once again. All right? So, let me just run by you two songs before I go. It's a famous song, right? It's a long time ago. Um, I don't know if you know this name, but Red Plastic Bag. Good evening to the following persons. Cornell Speedy Cena, Chosen Heather and Garth Gale for helping to make sure this Vibe Live looks good tonight. More people would have seen it. If you share, like, comment, and repost, all right? Don't forget, I'm on the YouTube channel. You can follow me on YouTube. Get other people to follow me on YouTube. This segment, in fact, this show tonight will be uploaded on YouTube within the next 45 minutes to one hour. So stick and stay. Let me play this song for you and one song after this. So that is Volcano, a famous song. It was recorded in 1999 by Red Plastic Bag from Barbados. He's a well-known Calypso soca singer. All right. So remember, guys and girls, over there in the Eastern Caribbean, Jamaicans are standing by you, and we must take this opportunity to help in some shape or form by donating to the local Red Cross, whichever area you live, whether it's in Jamaica, the United States, Canada, UK, wherever. Let us help to address what is happening in St. Vincent and Grenadines and with that we have our reggae song to take us out Everybody wants to be 
So this is it guys, so it is your vibe live. Stay safe. Remember the COVID-19 protocols. Follow them. Enjoy yourself. And don't forget the people of Sin Hitler and the Grenadines. We have to help them in escaping this monstrous natural disaster called a volcano. Take care. One love.